Welcome. In this segment, we're going to talk about ecologic study designs. The key point about an ecologic study design to remember is that either the exposure or the health outcome, or both, are measured at a group level. Let's start, and I'll show you what I mean. The learning objectives for the ecologic study design segment are to list the basic characteristics and explain the ecologic study design, and also to identify the advantages and disadvantages of the ecologic study design. Ecologic studies are a type of observational study design. They are one of the four types of observational study designs that we are covering in our course. Let's first talk about the unit of measurement. In each of the observational study designs we've covered so far, i.e. the cohort, case control, and cross-sectional study designs, generally exposure data and health outcome data are collected from each study participant. There are some exceptions, but they won't be discussed here. Study designs which collect data at the individual level include cohort, case control, and cross-sectional studies. In contrast, you can also make measurements at a larger group level. Exposure and or health outcome data are collected at a group level, not an individual level. Generally, ecologic studies use a group level of measurement. For example, the exposure measurement would be yearly average air pollution concentrations in five different cities. Sometimes the health outcome occurrence, proportions or rates, is only known at a group level. For example, the yearly mortality or death rate from chronic lung disease in these same cities with measured air pollution levels. Let's compare group and individual level data. Group level data averages the exposure of the group, not individuals, but individual level data provides information on the exposure of each individual. With group level data, we only know the health outcome of the group. We don't know the exposure of individuals who became diseased and those who did not. But with individual level data, we are able to link individual exposures to those who became diseased and those who did not. Linking individual exposures is a critical difference to note between individual and group level data. This leads us to the ecologic fallacy, the major limitation of an ecologic study design. An ecologic fallacy is concluding that an association between the exposure and the health outcome at a group level is true at an individual level, when this may not be true. The reason for this fallacy is that we do not know the link between exposure and the health outcome among individuals within each group, i.e. we don't know the number of diseased persons who were exposed or non-exposed in the high exposure group nor in the low exposure group. What we find at a group level may not hold true in an individual level. Let's consider the hypothetical example that air pollution is higher in Los Angeles than in Denver but mortality from lung disease is lower in Los Angeles than in Denver. We might come to the fallacious conclusion that air pollution protects against lung disease deaths. The explanation might be that persons dying of lung disease in Denver may have moved from high air pollution cities. We don't know the cumulative exposures of cases and non-cases in either city. Consider this example of an ecologic study question. Is the ranking of cities by air pollution levels associated with the ranking of cities by mortality from cardiovascular disease, adjusting for differences in average age, percent below poverty level, and occupation? Note that in this example, there are no data at the individual level allowing us to link individual exposure to air pollution with outcome, such as cardiovascular disease mortality. Here is another example of an ecologic study question. Have seat belt laws made a difference in motor vehicle fatality rates, comparing years before and after laws were passed? Note that again, there are no data at the individual level allowing us to link individual compliance with seat belt laws to the outcome, motor vehicle fatalities. Now we will discuss advantages of the ecologic study design. Group level data on exposure and health outcomes are often publicly available in state and national databases, i.e. census data, mortality, and cancer registry, so ecologic studies have lower cost and are convenient. Ecologic studies are useful for evaluating the impact of community level interventions, for example, fluoridation of water, seat belt laws, mass media campaigns, etc. We can compare outcomes at a community level before and after the intervention. In the United States and many other countries, data are regularly obtained on air quality, water quality, and weather conditions. The size of the population, the status of the economy, and the health of the population. 
For example, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency collects air pollution data at selected locations all around the country using the National Air Quality Monitoring Network. These monitors collect air pollution data at the group level. In contrast, to collect individual level air pollution exposure data, a person would need to wear an exposure monitor. An example of group level data on a health outcome would be obesity prevalence among low income preschool children by state in the United States. State and county obesity prevalences can be mapped to explore regional variations. Comparing obesity prevalence by state, we see that California and North Carolina are two states with higher prevalence. If we look at obesity by county, you can see there is a great deal more variation in obesity prevalence by county. In fact, there are some counties that have obesity prevalence that is above 20%, but the state average is only 10 to 15%, such as in Washington State. If we were planning educational interventions in California and North Carolina, the county-level data will allow us to use our limited public health resources wisely and target specific counties. These state and county obesity prevalences are examples of group-level data that are used for ecologic studies. These publicly available records provide low-cost and convenient ways for researching variation in health outcomes at a group level with characteristics of the population, the environment, or the economy at a group level. Now let's look at an example of an ecologic study conducted on household firearms or gun ownership in the United States and deaths. In this figure from Fliegler et al. 2013, we see that by state, the group level, as household firearm ownership increases, there seems to be an increase in firearm deaths per 100,000. This is an example of an ecologic study in which both the exposure, household firearm ownership and outcome, firearm deaths, are measured at a group level. Another advantage of an ecologic study is that this study design can maximize exposure differences between communities where minimal within community differences render individual risk studies impractical, whereas exposures may differ substantially between communities, such as cities, states, or countries, i.e., effective latitude on the risk of multiple sclerosis. Ecologic studies are also useful for studying the effects of short term variations in exposures within the same community for example, temperature and mortality. Examples of small exposure differences within a community but large between community differences include quality of drinking water, concentration of certain air pollutants such as ozone and fine particles, average fat content of diet, larger differences between countries than between individuals within the same city of a country, or cumulative exposure to sunlight, where there are larger differences by latitude north-south of residents than among individuals within the same latitude. Now we will discuss limitations of the ecologic study design. We have already discussed the ecologic fallacy earlier in this segment. The ecologic fallacy refers to concluding that association at a group or aggregate level are true at the individual level when they may not be. Another limitation of ecologic studies is that we cannot be confident that exposure preceded the outcome. Lastly, another limitation of ecologic studies is that we do not know what happens to individual people. Thus, migration into and out of communities can bias the interpretation of ecologic studies. This concludes the segment on ecologic study design. What I'd like you to remember from this segment is that in an ecologic study, either the exposure or the health outcome, or both, are measured at a group level. One example to help you remember that is the example of air pollution that's measured at a central site location and is used to determine what the exposures are for a population within a 10-mile radius. That's an example of an exposure that's measured at a group level. We will end the lecture on ecologic studies with a practice question. 